Hi, I'm Gavin Mendel Gleason. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Terminus DB, and I'm here to speak to you about CAMS, which is the Critical Asset Management System. So uh, CAMS is designed to, for building climate resilience and creating a local knowledge graph for Dominica and beyond. So Dominica is a small Caribbean island nation and uh, they are, you know, it's rich with natural resources and beauty, but not so, uh, but they have quite a lot of problems with climate. So in 2017, uh, Hurricane Maria, a Category 5 hurricane, came in, 160 mile per hour winds, 90% of the island's structures were destroyed, and 1.3 billion in losses, which is 224% of Dominica's annual GDP. So, um, the Prime Minister, uh, Roosevelt Skerritt, said, the winds are merciless, we shall survive by the grace of God. So they really, uh, they really suffered under some extreme stresses. Addressing the United Nations, Prime Minister Skerritt appealed, I come to you straight from the front line of the war on climate change. In the past, we would prepare for one heavy storm a year. Now thousands of storms form on a breeze in the mid-Atlantic and line up to pound us with maximum force and fury. So world leaders came together to, uh, to form the Paris Agreement uh, in 2015. It's a UN climate change conference, COP21. Um, and we, the, the aim was to keep sea temperatures increases well below 2%. Uh, but do we trust world leaders to actually fulfill on those promises? And I think the reality that we'll find is that these, these uh, boundaries will be crossed. So we're actually not doing anywhere near enough to stop climate change. So we have to be thinking about mitigation strategies as well, because we can't uh, move all of these parts at once. So the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, the UNDRR, um, they've been looking at mitigation strategies and assisting uh, countries with, with the strategies for that. So that's, um, there's a Department of Planning and the Department of Industry and Commerce and Climate Execution Agency for Dominica. In conjunction with ARISE US, which is a, um, it's a private sector alliance that's working with the UNDRR on dealing with some of these climate mitigation strategies. So ARISE is formed, uh, it's a coalition of different uh, actors. So Terminus DB is a partner, Data Sequia, BGC Engineering versus Labs, Tony Corrado and Eric Su. Okay, so what are we building? We're building CAMS, which is the climate uh, critical asset management system for building climate resilience. And what is the goal of CAMS? So CAMS goal is to get better visibility of what assets exist, what their dependencies are, and finding mitigation strategies so that when there are events that have occurred or are about to occur, there's some way to, to form planning decisions by having better visibility of what assets exist, what kind of status they have, and what the interrelationship of those are. So what does that include? That includes all key infrastructure systems, all emergency response assets, assets that can become critical in an emergency. For instance, schools are sometimes used for people to, to house them as temporary shelters. But there's also backup power supplies, etc. There's assets or features that are uh, a long way away, dams, levees, energy, grid links, but that are related uh, and important to understand. There's also natural systems, assets that are important to economic recovery, for instance, ports and other things. Assets important to community recovery, such as community centers and welfare offices. And we need to be thinking about plans affecting all of these. So what's the problem to solve? At the moment, uh, usually uh, countries, uh, utilities, all these different actors exist with these different assets, and some of them have partial understanding of what these assets are. So an electrical company might understand where all their pylons are, they might understand where their, where their power sources are, but not everybody has uh, visibility of these. And the impact of that on the grid is not always understood by everyone. So, the way that these uh, assets are also maintained is in a very wide range of different kinds of formats. So there's uh, everything from asset management systems that are used 
primarily for understanding uh, capital assets that exist inside of utilities or in corporations. If you have private corporations doing the phone infrastructure, for instance, as they do in Dominica, through to uh, the state, which in Dominica will often have their assets listed in an Excel spreadsheet or um, in a CSV or maintained even in books uh, and things of that nature. So the problem that we need to do, that we have, is actually we have to unify a lot of this knowledge from different sources with different requirements such that you can get an overall knowledge graph that can give you a view of the information that you're interested in. So this gives us knowledge about the asset relationships together. So Terminus DB, that's uh, where we come in. We're an open source, in memory, document oriented graph database. Um, and we are designed for rapid application development for complex knowledge graphs. So when you're dealing, when you write something with Terminus TB, first we step in by defining the sort of scope of the project. And we did this in conjunction with many different stakeholders in Dominica, along with the, the uh, Arise. Then we build a schema. So the next stage is trying to figure out what kinds of assets you want to have visibility of, how those assets are connected to each other, what kind of additional information you need to store about those assets. And we do this collaboratively as a, as a sort of hackathon session where we defined all of the elements that would go into this. Uh, then we end up with a, a fully formed schema from this uh, communication and this schema can then be browsed uh, by non-technical users to understand the kinds of properties and connections between different elements. Um, and here's just some views into our, uh, our online uh, user interface that you can browse the schema, see what kinds of elements exist for an asset. There's asset history, identifiers, commissioning date, description, design standards. There's a set of the last maintained uh, times. So you'll, you'll have a uh, last modified uh, and you'll have its location in space, as well as a spatial web identifier, which gives an absolute uh, identifier for spatial coordinates in three dimensions. We can also see all the relationships that an asset holds with other things. Uh, so there's graded hazards, there's assets, uh, there's events, there's, so events might be something like a hurricane. Graded hazards are information about what kinds of hazards uh, can exist and what their gradations are. And this is just sort of a, an example of uh, the forms that are generated automatically once you have that schema so that the information can be browsed from, uh, from Terminus. Uh, um, from Terminus's uh, dashboard. So the next stage is to build the UI. So once you have that, you automatically get these forms for entering in the documents, for in entering in all the information and the connections that exist between documents, but uh, it's, it's not themed. So usually when you're building an application, you want to theme it for your specific application. So we have a, a, a framework for building the UI where you just specify some uh, UI JSON. That UI JSON can even include callbacks to uh, JavaScript applications that do more sophisticated changes. You can change the class structures uh, in the CSS, etc., and allow it to be themed as you like. Then you can build a very simple and straightforward React application uh, by uh, referring to these types that you want to edit, that you want to update, or that you want to view. And then you can perform very sophisticated queries over the graph that involve lots of different data points, linking them together, which is very difficult to do with uh, just a document store like Mongo, but also quite hard to do with something like SQL, where relational databases make, uh, make it somewhat difficult to do um, complicated chain queries. So, um, we use a data log query language, which allows you to concisely express uh, complex patterns, these long chain patterns. Um, and it supports both fluent and functional query styles. You can write things in a fluent style. Uh, it looks like, you know, it's a DSL essentially for JavaScript or for Python. 
that allows you to do these graph queries in a, in a quite native fashion. So the kinds of queries that we're doing, you can see the sort of graphy nature of it. So you have an uh, asset A depends on an asset B, and it's dependent on an asset C. So like, for instance, if you are a hospital, you're dependent on uh, the power supply coming to you. If you're a pile, you know, if you're some, some uh, intermediate producer, then you might also produce something for asset C that's required for things to continue. And each of these assets have, um, can, be can be impacted by events. And these, they're located in a specific area, and the events can take place in an area. And the event se severity or scale is also important for whether or not the asset is going to be susceptible. So certain kinds of uh, assets will be uh, more or less uh, accessible or er, um, impacted by different scales of events. So um, an applicable, okay, so this is another good example of just how complex and graph-like the application actually is in the end. So you have assets, they can, um, asset B can be dependent on, ass, or asset A is dependent on asset B, which is dependent on asset C, which is dependent on asset D, which is dependent on asset E. And these dependency chains um, uh, can mean that asset E could be affected uh, by some kind of uh, event that's not uh, that is not directly susceptible to, but that one of its other dependencies is susceptible to. So you have to know about the applicable ha uh, uh, hazards, the asset category, the asset owners. Uh, in information about the maintenance history is also important. So you know uh, how long um, something, <laughs> how long ago it was maintained, and that might actually mean that it's not usable. This is really important, for instance, with backup power supplies. Uh, if they haven't been maintained, they may not actually be functional. And that happened in Puerto Rico uh, in the last, uh, in the floodings that happened a few years back, that they actually thought they had backup power supplies that had not been checked. And so they didn't actually work when it came down uh, to the problem. So this is a view on the actual uh, CAMS uh, application, which is, uh, by the way, an open source application. Very easy to get started with. You can just uh, uh, pull it from our uh, GitHub repository um, and then run it inside of a Docker. And then you can play around with it, modify it, and do what you like. It's open source. So this shows you some of the assets that are listed there. And when you clicked on this uh, Trafalgar Hydro Power Plant, you can see all of the things that are dependent on the Trafalgar Hydro Power Plant. You get a list of the critical links on the side and you all of the assets there. You can click through those assets and see their asset pages, all the details about it. You can also, you'll see at the top, there's a um, failure path um, and upward links. So you can see all of the things that it depends upon or all of the things that, it, uh, that depend on it in a transitive closure. So it'll jump all of the hops necessary to see what those links are. And then you can navigate to these various different things. You can see where they're located, the information about them, or click through to them to get their information. You can also pick from uh, applicable hazards at the top and see uh, which hazards at which category level are, um, are susceptible. So if there's a hurricane three or a hurricane category three coming in, you could select hurricanes and typhoons, click three, and you could see all the assets that are liable to be severely damaged by a category three, uh, but not those that would be um, susceptible to a category five. And you see here that it, even in a category one, uh, the, the airport ceases to function, and that could be inf interesting information from an asset view. So when you're loading assets, you can go, uh, you, you can click in and see um, a sort of uh, uh, synopsis of the information about the asset. You can edit it. You can enter in new information, commissioning date, design standards, etc. And you can set up uh, links for dependencies uh, for that asset. So this is basically designed as a minimum viable product that would work for Dominica for their, to, to deal with their problems. But we're also trying to expand out this use case and try to get other players involved. So uh, there's a number of other new cities and countries, small countries, have been looking at uh, using camps and uh, developing it further um, 
So what are the use cases for the minimum viable product that we see at the moment? Really, it's for planning uh, during impending danger to really take um, an overview of asset vulnerability so you can make plans ahead of time by having that overview. And then for post-disaster mitigation. So once things have actually gone down, it could be useful to know uh, which, uh, which of these uh, assets is most critical to getting more assets up and functioning again. So what's next? Well, there's a lot more to come after this. So firstly, uh, we want to deliver this MVP to more islands, cities, communities uh, who need to be resilient to the climate change that is coming to them. Uh, and secondly, we want to have a lot of <laughs> new features added that have been asked for by various cities and countries that are using it. And it is a collaborative open source project, so there's lots of um, interest uh, from various different programmers, we, but we invite more people to come in uh, and help us to actually make these features available. So one of them is automated alerts to asset owners. So sometimes the people running the CAM system may not be uh, the people who are actually the asset owners. For instance, in the case that you have a, um, uh, a, a, a electrical provider, they might have information about the electrical power plant and they can be warned by the people running the CAM system who may be the state um, uh, about the fact that they're susceptible to some kind of impending crisis. Um, we'd like the, a mobile application built out, out of this. So a lot of the people who are going to be surveying or updating the assets or doing maintenance would like to be able to enter the information in from their phone or from a tablet. So we really think that it'd be important to have that. Uh, and to make it so that it works offline uh, with push notifications so that all of the changes that they make would get pushed um, upstream once they actually are able to connect because many of these places may not have co connectivity uh, by cell, uh, so that's also important. And lastly, we want more on analyzing the graph. So post-disaster review uh, screens, various different kinds of uh, dashboards sorts of analysis that can be done. Um, and to get some kind of ideas of uh, changes over time and the impact of disasters. So that's, that's CAMS, uh, that's our open source project for good. And uh, I hope people who are watching this, who are interested in climate resilience, uh, come to the CAMS uh, and, and try to start participating in the community. We have a, a, a website at climateresilient.world and it points through to the CAMS GitHub repo where you can, you can uh, get a hold of CAMS yourself uh, or, uh, so that you can contribute to it or use it if you're, um, if you're uh, looking for an asset management system for a small city or even for uh, companies that might want to do asset management uh, in this way. They can, they can have a look at that. So this is our, um, our GitHub critical assets management uh, group. Uh, and we also have a board that has all of the, um, the kinds of issues where, where it is in the process of the pipeline for in progress, done, doing, uh, and, and who's actually doing that. So uh, thank you for listening uh, and, and do uh, try to get involved if you can. Thank you.